Space industry analysts have recently ranked the top five nations most likely to get us back to the moon. The United States, four. Russia, three. China, two. India, one. And the Isle of Man, zero. And liftoff. This may surprise you, it doesn't surprise me. As a proud Manx resident, I know we're at the forefront of innovation. During the Second World War, radar was trialled here and 3D telephones were also tested here. So it's no wonder we're a big player in the private space race. <music> Nestled in amongst the 80,000 of us islanders are more than 20 companies working in the space industry. Space tourism, orbital filing, optics for, for spacecraft landing on Mars, international space university presence, an amazing collection. Well, why is that? Is it just tax breaks? No, it's much wider than that. There are government grants of up to 40% available. Government helps to market the industry as well. So it's, it's, a, it's a package, really, that attracts people here, I would say. CVI Optics is the real deal. They've already had great space success. The incredibly smooth, laser-made optic lenses they made here for the Mars lander trip helped the roving robot capture stunning images of snowstorms on the red planet. They are used for a very precise metrology to evaluate what's going on in the planet's atmospheres or indeed in the Earth's atmosphere. If you look at this, which is made up of four prisms, they're being held together not by magic and not by glue, but surely by molecular force. The molecules just stick bond together, together bond together. I'm on my way to a funky little airport to meet a real-life spaceman with big plans, Colonel Valery Tokarev, a bona fide hero of the Russian Federation and an honoured Russian cosmonaut. Colonel, welcome to the Island Man. He's been around the Earth more than 150 times. Oh. Hey, lift off. Oh. We're heading out into the countryside where he's going to show me something special. OK, come in, come in. Welcome to the space station area. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> It's a real space station, and we are planning to launch it. So you plan to turn this into a, a space hotel? Uh, it might be not exactly hotel, but this is a living room, this is working place. It might be apartment. We are planning for six people during the one month. And is it big enough? It's a big enough in space. It's not big enough on a planet, but zero gravity, it gives you opportunity to fly everywhere. And we can use this space? Yes, you can sleep there, okay. not here, oh, on a wall, on a <laughs> roof. The space stations are being stored here at the company's HQ while research continues. But the future launch site is likely to be in Russia. We are planning to start uh, uh, space tourism 2014. Wow, that's pretty soon. Well, Valerie, you've, you've lived in space. What's it like to look down at the Earth? Uh, it's amazing. It's just not possible to say a couple of words. You understand when you're up. So this really is a giant leap for Manx kind. Manx kind, very good clever. Very good, good line. Good. Oh, oh, look. Oh. <laughs> well, we've spaced things up to welcome a real space scientist and government advisor, Dr. Maggie Adairin Pocock. Um, we were talking about the name Adairin earlier on, weren't we? Yeah, it's, it's, it's Welsh, but you're Caribbean. No, no, a Nigerian. Nigerian. Yes. Adairin means bird. Ah. Tom will know that, won't you, Tom? Is it? No. Ah, <laughs> come on! Do you have any Welsh in you at all, Maggie? <laughs> Not as far as I know. Okay, so it's a Nigerian name as well. Nigerian bird as well. Oh, I see. Okay, okay that, that must be what it is. <laughs> All right, so how seriously do you take them, what they're doing in the Isle of Man? Well, space tourism is quite a new thing, but they are really going for it. I mean, they're getting the equipment, they're um, going for the X Prize. So I, I think, I think uh, in the future, this should be very exciting. The most famous one is the Virgin one, isn't it? Virgin Galactic, yes. Yeah, but uh, like you say, it's not just Isle of Man and Virgin Galactic. It, there's space tourism all over the place now. It's springing up everywhere because people see it as the next step. And there are lots of people out there who want to get out into space. Me, I I'm one of You're them. You're desperate, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> I know who I am. No. Really? <laughs> but she, you want to go beyond, you know, like Buzz Lightyear, aren't you? To I know. Where do you want to no, go? No, no low Earth orbit. I want to go to Mars. Like. Yeah, forget the moon. She wants to go straight to Mars. So, <laughs> why is Mars your dream destination then? Well, 
I'm a space scientist, and so I'm into that sort of thing anyway. And to have a whole planet to explore. And also, you could potentially live on Mars. It has a very thin atmosphere, and it has water. So you could sort of get oxygen, you could sort of potentially grow plants. You could live on Mars. So that's my retirement plan. But we are getting dealt out of the space race as human beings, aren't we? 